Hi guys, hope you're having a great day. I'm having a fab day. It's still only 10 o'clock in the morning and I've just put the finishing brush full of paint onto this uh, oil painting. This is an original painting. It's not a copy of one of my digital paintings, but I did use um, Art Rage to help me work out some colors. I was struggling halfway through and I was wondering where I was gonna go with it. So I loaded it into Art Rage. Uh, did a paint over and then came back and did the uh, traditional painting. I've got a video on the other channel for how I did the digital painting if you want to see that. But this obviously is the finished original painting. Really pleased with it. I've got a new favourite brush. That doesn't mean the brush is new. It is new. All my brushes are new. There's no affiliate thing going off here. But I like the four uh, Black Hog brush, number four. And this is by Jackson's. It's helped me get these really delicate little marks. And as I say, I'm, there's no affiliate ship here. I bought this brush myself. And uh, I just really love it. Of all the brushes I've got, this, believe it or not, which is really small for me, um, I'm really loving it, getting just these delicate strokes on it. It took me ages. But I'll just show you what I did. Let's get straight into the painting. So I begin by mixing up a pink colour with quinacridone magenta. I think I pronounced that right, I'm not too sure. And I used a bit of thinners to make it a nice runny wash. I get that over the all, all of the canvas and then I rub that in with a bit of tissue so it doesn't lift up too much with the other colours that I'm putting on. And I want that pink to glow through. I don't want a... Um, totally uh, I don't want to cover it completely it's really useful because it helps me uh, judge tones a lot better by knocking out all of the white uh, but I don't want it to uh, I don't want to cover it all completely I want little areas of that pink to glow through and um, as I'm finding it really useful with the oil painting I like to sketch out take a small brush and just sketch out the main features on the canvas because unlike the digital painting I do, I do not want to be having to move objects because I've put them in the wrong place or I've drawn them to the wrong scale. So that's why I'm taking the time just sort of sketching in um, the main features and I'm using a fairly pale colour. I've got sort of um, an ochre mixed with a bit of white. Uh, I'm speeding it up now because what I've done with this video, I've sort of key areas, I've slowed the video down so you can see me start a technique off um, at sort of normal speed and then I speed it up so I can make the video a reasonable time. You can see there I'm sort of putting in benches and things and I've changed uh, the wall. I didn't want, there's a wall sort of middle of the photo that goes right the way across, just horizontally cuts through the uh, scene. Uh, so if you look at the rough drawing I've done, I've made that uh, curve and meander up and down to give a more, much more interesting composition, I guess. I'm hoping anyway. And then I begin by painting it. I'm still sort of, because I'm a watercolour painter um, mainly, I still kind of put in the light colours first and then work to the darks, which I know is a lot of, all, all of the, or most of the oil painters that, that I watch get in the darks first and then put the lights on the top. And I'm kind of um, trying to get myself to do that, but... At the minute, I still kind of um, work out putting in light colours first. And also, it's that it's the sort of distant areas that appear lighter. So when I'm painting over the foreground in their dark colours anyway, so it seems natural for me to paint that way. I'm starting to get some dark colours in now. And what I'm doing at this stage, I'm just blocking in lots of colour over the whole of the canvas so this is like an underpainting, but I'm still trying to leave areas that are nice and um, pink. And I'm stopping myself getting really 
fussy. I was doing a painting the other day and I just got so wrapped up in the foreground that um, it just turned out to be a complete mess and I scrapped the painting. So I'm really forcing myself not to um, put too much detail in there. And you'll also see that um, when I drew that wall in and made that um, sort of undulate down uh, uh, and and up i've cut a lot of that sort of foreground in the bottom right hand side of the photograph that's all gone leaving much less foreground to deal with which uh, for me seems to make it a lot easier so i'm now thinking about dark colors and trying to add uh, some darks into this because I'm I'm conscious that I need plenty of contrast within the painting. I want some nice lights and darks. So I'm thinking about that and putting those in. And what I'm doing now, I'm sort of just flicking in t little twigs that if you look at the photo, you can see all the sort of uh, branches on those distant trees. I'm just sort of flicking in with delicate strokes some of those uh, branches in actual fact most of them get covered up uh, later on in the painting but i put them in anyway the actual um techniques that i was using in this painting developed as as i was working and it, they changed slightly i sort of started off in one style and ended up painting something quite different when I get to the end. Just pop, popping in the um, middle distant trees. Trying to get them in in one nice swift stroke if I can. Getting some nice darks in there. Some reds. For the uh, foreground trees. Again, putting these in, in a, trying to very confident sweeping strokes to get the initial branches in. Popping in some um, background branches there and some uh, a tree, adding a, an extra tree. Just jumping over the canvas, making use of that sort of dark colour I've mixed up to put little um, areas of dark into the painting. So I'm, this is still the underpainting uh, in my mind. I've not got to the point yet where I'm um, sort of getting into the detail too much. Although I suppose on the wall there, I'm starting to um, get some detail in. So I decided that the foreground needs some colour in it now. So again, with a big brush, try not to uh, get the de uh, too much detail. I want it very, very loose and some nice uh, brush strokes. Very visible. This is a painting I'm not doing. I didn't do any blending in this painting. And that was an absolutely conscious choice right from the offset. I... I knew I did not want to blend. I wanted you to see every brush stroke. I wanted it to be a very painterly uh, painting, if that's a word, painterly. But so you'll see me um, putting colors down and then a color similar to it next to it. But at no point do I um, try to blend anything at all. So it's at this point that I start to uh, come up with the technique that I decide to use throughout the painting where I've discovered this uh, number four black hog airbrush that I mentioned at the start of the video and you'll see I've, I've put in these uh, just very delicate marks on the grass just under where I'm painting now you'll see them and uh, that starts to give me an idea of how I can use that same mark to um, create 
images and light and texture over the all of the painting. So it's at this point that I've got in my head now how this painting is going to look and um, I'm sort of really pleased with where it's going. And now you can see quite clearly how I am using those marks to uh, create light within the trees. And my daughter th said she thought it looked like confetti, uh, which I was gutted with, to be honest, because <laughs> I, <laughs> I wanted it to look like sky, not confetti, but she loved it anyway. So anyway, you can see what I'm doing, I'm putting sort of darker uh, blue marks to the right hand side where the trees create a lot of shade and then as it moves over into the lighter area i'm doing much fewer uh, marks in that dark color and you'll see me uh, do the exact opposite where i mix up a lighter color and start at the right hand side and work over to the left side uh, still working with the darker colors and then this way of painting really helped me keep nice, vibrant colours with it within the old scene. So basically what I'm doing, I'm sort of mixing up one colour, uh, applying that over the whole of the painting, then mixing up another colour and um, using that. So I'm not sort of chopping and changing between uh, colours uh, every brush stroke. What I do do, however, though, actually, as the painting progresses, I start to use fewer uh, strokes of one color, then mix up another color. Now I'm working in the grass, doing exactly the same thing. So all of a sudden, this painting is moved in into the next stage where I've got the uh, initial... Um, painting down and now I am um, doing the over painting as it were gone back to the small brush flicking in a few more uh, branches on the middle distant trees just to make them a little bit more obvious and uh, working on the trees now but i'm beginning to think what's going through my mind is that um the branches of the foreground trees or the trunks of the foreground trees i should say are getting a bit dark and a little bit sludgy and the same goes for the wall uh, that runs across the painting I'm just thinking that's a bit dark too. So I'm st starting to wonder what I need to do with it. And I start adding uh, different colors, dark purples and things into it. But um, it's starting to uh, get that I've got a, a fair bit of paint on. So it's difficult to keep nice crisp colors. So I continue working on adding branches and just sort of um, getting the looks of the trees right. But I'm co conscious that um, it's looking a little bit dull in places. What I'm doing now, I've taken uh, like a rigger brush and I'm just flicking in loads and loads of twigs uh, and just sort of flicking all over the place to add that sort of look of all the twigs. And that in itself, I think, uh, is a, a really nice look that uh, could be left like that. But it, I don't. I, I go in and overpaint a lot of the lows out. And I'm also discovering now that w once I flick those brushes in and it broke up the br thick branches and left little gaps in between them. That looked very natural to me, how uh, tree trunks are and branches. You don't see a full branch all the time. You see parts of a branch. And uh, flicking all of those twigs in broke that up really nice. I really like that. 
So I'm going in with more darks, which is, uh, I, I, I'm going to say a mistake. It's probably not because it gives a nice ground for all the colors to go over the top. But um, I start putting in some highlights in now. And this is the point where I'm thinking, yeah, I'm getting the contrast I want. It's starting to pop. I'm liking it um, because I thought I was losing it at one point. But putting in these highlights in that stone wall uh, and in the distant wall just sort of lifts the whole thing for me. And then I start putting some more colour, but it's just really muddy. So I'm sort of realising at this point, I'm going to have to let the painting dry to uh, do what I want to do with those trees. Still tr struggling with the uh, dark colour somewhat. My palette for this, by the way, was Payne's Grey, Thalo Turquoise, um cadmium red i used that in the second half of the paint in the cadmium red uh quinacridone magenta cobalt blue you can see lots of cobalt blue in there yellow ochre um t loads of titanium white and then uh, a bit later on i add a few other colors to the palette that is uh, a yellow green that's a de la Rowney color and also, I decided I wanted some Indian yellow to give some really sharp uh, yellows. So I'm back to the uh, number four hog brush, adding in these dabs of colour to give the dappled light. You can see now I'm putting in a light colour at the um, right hand side of the painting and bringing that across as the light sort of is coming in from the um, right hand side. When I'm not uh, painting, I'm mixing up colors. There we go. I'm just putting in a little bit of the color, which is probably yellow ochre uh, that's in the uh, foreground, a little bit of yellow ochre and white, and maybe a little bit of um, cobalt blue as well, just a tiny, tiny bit, or burnt sienna, just to make that creamy colour that you can see in the sky. So I've got a sort of few flecks in there. So this painting at this stage uh, took me approximately four hours to get to here. Just got a little bit of more work to do. And I'm very uh, happy with it, but I know that there are issues that I've got this really dark wall. I need to sort out the uh, little bench that I'm actually painting now. I need to sort out the fence. Am I going to put in those posts leaning up against the wall that are um, in the foreground of the painting? Should I put those in? Um, what am I going to do about all of the dark trees? They're looking a little bit drab and dreary and... I need to sort it out. So once I finished this first day's painting, I sat back and uh, I, I had it in my head. I knew exactly wanted what I wanted to do and I came up with a solution. So uh, this is the second day of the painting. Uh, I've let it well, dry a bit. So a second day, I've sort of finished painting it about three days ago and it's not 100% dry. But we get in there but what i did do i took a photo of the painting loaded it into um art rage because i wasn't happy with these darks in the trees and i wanted to experiment with color but i didn't want to experiment on top of the painting uh, i wanted to have a, a, a better idea of how it would come out 
before I even touched the paint, because A, paint's really expensive, and B, I didn't want the painting to get too sludgy and uh, too much paint on there. So as you can see on my iPad, I've got the enhanced version. So I loaded that into ArtRage. If you go over to my digital channel, you can see how I did that and added lots of color into these dark areas. So I'm now going to carry on painting and put those colors that I've added to my digital version onto the real painting. So let's crack on. So I'm beginning with a little bit of orange. If you look at the uh, thumbnail, you can see how vibrant those trees look and the walls look now. Uh, now I've added those color. So all I need to do is look at that reference and try and replicate those colors on uh, my trees. And I also decide that uh, looking at the digital version, so uh, sort of looking at it with fresh eyes at a different scale, that I needed to add a few more branches to the uh, trees. They all seem to be growing out towards the right hand side. So I wanted a few branches uh, coming over to the left. So I'm putting one in now, as you can see. That gives a much more uh, balanced look. So I'm sort of trying to get the same colors that I've got in the digital photo. I don't, I'm not sort of, um, Adam and uh, mixing the colors up exactly the same as the digital version that would just drive me to distraction so I've, I'm just sort of using that as a rough approximation and then I go in and uh, add these new colors and you can see I'm also adding uh, just little dabs of uh, light into a few twigs it just sort of makes them look a bit more um, as though they've got light cast on them. And I decide to, to uh, as you look at the thumbnail, I've also added some light color in, right in the sort of middle of the photo. So sort of there's a, a, a opening in the clouds, I guess, where the light's casting a shadow over, uh, a, sorry, the sunlight is casting a highlight across the uh, distant ground. So I've put that in. And I bring that into the sky as well to sort of silhouette the trees a bit uh, later on. You see, I've posted, uh, I put the posts in now. I, did, I just decided that I'll light those. I wanted them to go in. I've now painted the bench. And I'm adding, uh, I've switched the um, thumbnail off now because at this point, I've kind of got all the colors in that are in the thumbnail. But then I start to, uh, now I've got the confidence uh, about it I start to add one or two other little touches like the sort of lighter yellow colors in the foreground that sort of start towards the bottom right and lead you up towards the uh, the bench and the fence that takes you that then takes you into the trees and um, I'm adding sort of dappled light within those trees you can see I'm picking up uh, light colors as well just to make it the old picture pop a little bit more I put in sort of dappled light coming through the branches so some quite nice highlights on the right hand side popping out between those dark colors Popping in some more highlights just to uh, make those trees stand out a little bit more. I put in a few more um, lights on top of the wall where the light's catching the stones. So I'm just sort of doing really refined final touches. I do a lot of standing back here sort of walking across the studio looking at it and I'm backwards and forwards every two seconds pretty much every other brush stroke there we go a little bit more highlights on the wall this is getting really close to the point where I'm very happy with this I'm just going to get it signed here we go putting the signature on so there we have it, a finished painting. This is my first um, 
original, not a copy of one of my digitals. So this is uh, the first one that I've done uh, purely as an oil painting. I hope you like this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, there's a good chance you are because this is only my fourth video. Uh, please consider subscribing and clicking the um, bell notification so you get notified of all the videos I'm making because I'm hoping to be putting out uh, an oil painting or a watercolor or you know, uh, a traditional painting once a week. So every Monday, I hopefully will be launching uh, or uploading a new video. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.